Good evening. As envoy to the city of Jerusalem and to the Knesset, on behalf of the Knights of Malta, Sovereign Hospitaller's Order of St. John of Jerusalem, and as an observer state of the United Nations, I bring greetings to the people of the State of Israel and to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. On December 23rd, the U.S. administration abdicated its authority to block U.N. Resolution 2334. Secretary John Kerry outlined in a lengthy speech at the U.S. State Department approximately seven points for the Obama administration's desire for final status talks for a two-state solution. On behalf of the Knights of Malta, it is my duty to illumine our position. As the sun rises on the holy city of Jerusalem, let us start with a little history lesson that is so often not taken with our morning coffee. Palestina, Prima, or Palestina, was a Byzantine province. From 390 until the 7th century, it was lost to the Sassanid Empire in 614, but was re-annexed in 628, before its final loss during the Muslim conquest of Syria in 636. How history repeats itself. Jerusalem was an important city of the Byzantine Empire also known as the Eastern Roman Empire. The Eastern Roman Empire had its seat in Constantinople, today's Istanbul in Turkey, named by the Emperor Constantine. The siege of Jerusalem was part of a military conflict which took place in the year 637 between the Byzantine Empire and the Rashidun Caliphate. Jerusalem was besieged in November of 636. In April 637, the Muslim conquest of the city solidified Arab control over Palestine, or Palestina. In the early part of the 7th century, Muslims began to build their mosques, Al-Aqsa and the Dome of the Rock, on the holiest part of Jerusalem, on the Temple Mount, right above the Western Wall the Kotel, as it is referred to by the Jews universally. In the second century, after crushing the last revolt, the Bar Kokhba revolt, the Romans first applied the name Palestina to Judea, the southern portion of what is now called the West Bank, in an attempt to minimize Jewish identification with the land of Israel. The Arabic word Philistine is derived from this Latin name. Now let's go back further in time. The Hebrews entered the land of Israel about 1300 BC, living under a tribal confederation until being united under the monarch King Saul. The Hebrew tribes were Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zavulun, Don, Naphtali, God, the Asher, Yosef, the Binyamin. The second king, David, established Jerusalem as the capital around 1000 BC, and David's son, Solomon, built the temple soon thereafter and consolidated the military, administrative, and religious functions of the kingdom. The nation was divided under Solomon's son, with the northern kingdom Israel lasting until 722 BC when the Assyrians destroyed it and the southern kingdom, Judah, surviving until the Babylonian conquest in 586 BC. The Jewish people enjoyed periods of sovereignty afterward before most Jews were finally driven from their homeland. Now let us get up to speed in the 21st century. 
The UN vote and Resolution 2334 of December 23, 2016 on the eve of Hanukkah and Christmas was not about preserving the two-state solution. Let us examine our thesis. A spokesman for British Prime Minister Theresa May said it was inappropriate of Kerry to attack the composition of the democratically elected government of an ally, adding that the UK believes that negotiations will only succeed when they are conducted between the two parties, supported by the international community. Charles Krauthammer said on Fox's special report that he believes the United States was behind last week's UN resolution condemning Israeli settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hammered the Obama administration for failing to veto the resolution and has since gone a step further, alleging that President Obama initiated the motion. Krauthammer agreed, saying this was a U.S. operation all the way. Quote, this is very dangerous, this is very serious damage that cannot be undone because you can't change a Security Council resolution without the acquiescence of the Russians and the Chinese, and you're not going to get it, he said. Krauthammer especially questioned the mention of East Jerusalem in the resolution. It's as if the UN passed a resolution declaring Mecca and Medina to be sovereign Jewish or Christian territory, he said. It's absurd. It's an insult to the intelligence of the world and is supremely damaging to the Israeli claim to its own holy places. They discussed the address on Fox and Friends with counter-terrorism expert Dr. Sebastian Gorka, who said President Obama is revealing his true feelings towards Israel in his final days in the White House. Gorka said Kerry is irrelevant and was simply speaking for Obama and his inner circle. Quote, Look at the last eight years. Look at the fact that the people who helped get President Obama elected, that team was sent to Israel to work against Bibi Netanyahu's election. That's all you need to know, Gorka recalled, adding that Obama has a personal animus towards Netanyahu. Israel wants to live in peace with its neighbors while most of Israel's neighbors want Israel destroyed and Jews dead. What is hard to understand? asks Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters of Sean Hannity. Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz slammed the Obama administration for setting back the peace process enormously between the Israelis and Palestinians by allegedly colluding to forward a resolution condemning West Bank settlements. Dershowitz predicted there will be a congressional hearing on whether President Obama or advisor Ben Rhodes had a hand in the resolution's crafting, but said there was obvious collusion between the White House and the UN. This couldn't have happened without complete support and encouragement of the US, he said. On New Year's Day, Mahmoud Abbas stated, speaking from his headquarters in Ramallah, quote, We are calling for 2017 to be the year of international recognition of the state of Palestine because more recognitions will strengthen the possibility of achieving a two-state solution and real peace. Although 136 countries have unilaterally recognized the state of Palestine, the UN body has only gone as far as upgrading the Palestinian Authority's status to a non-member 
observer state back in 2012. The Vatican and the Knights of Malta are the only other entities in the UN that have a similar observer state status. Further observation. Quote, naive and amusing, commented former presidential candidate Herman Cain, who said, this does nothing to advance peace in the area. Half a million people have been slaughtered in Syria. Obama, Kerry, and Clinton are rather like a collective Nero, fiddling while Rome is burning. This resolution took place in a year fraught with intrigue and deception. Persons like Paul Begala were allowed as foreign agents who worked directly for the Clinton and the Obama political machine to work to undermine the re-election of Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu. In this time, it has become rather like looking at a reenactment of the famous Dreyfus trial in France. Let us set the scene. Eshtahazi of the French High Command in league with the Germans and trading French secrets blames a hapless Jewish Captain Dreyfus for trading secrets with their enemies, the Germans, who winds up unjustly on Devil's Island. I, personally, feel like Emil Zola calling out my own government with one word. J'accuse. I accuse the Obama administration of collusion with the enemies of our allies and the United States. I say to Prime Minister Francois Hollande of France, don't get too cozy with those at the Mideast Peace Conference in Paris. Yes, the champagne will be flowing and the escargot will be crawling all over the Champs-Élysées but you could very well wind up with something much worse than the Treaty of Versailles. I can categorically state on behalf of the Knights of Malta that this State Department's position on the two-state solution could be the worst thing to happen to the free world since Chamberlain came back to Downing Street with a piece of paper, Peace in Our Time, which became the fog from which World War II emerged with the Nazi juggernaut taking over an unsuspecting Europe and the annihilation of six million Jews. Without Churchill, whose bust was removed from the White House by the way, I probably would not be speaking before you. As envoy to Jerusalem on behalf of the Grand Chancellery of the Knights of Malta, Sovereign Hospitaller's Order of St. John of Jerusalem, with our 900 years of history as protectors of the Holy Land, we categorically, without reservation, reject President Obama's State Department's position on Judea and Samaria. Further. We reiterate our position as stated in the Knights of Malta proclamation of April 1st, 1988, which I personally brought to Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir, in which we affirm the following, quote, Our unflagging support of Israel's sovereignty over the city of Jerusalem, the city of King David circa 1013 to 973 B.C., the Temple of Jerusalem of King Solomon, circa 973 to 933 BC, and the city of John the Baptist, circa 4 BC to 26 AD, and her right to govern the holy city on behalf of all races, all creeds, and all religions without prejudice. Further, the Order encourages, through dialogue, commerce, and diplomacy, the World Council of Nations to recognize the State of Israel's inherent rights through her sovereign history in perpetuity, 
as stated in the United Nations Resolution of November 29, 1947. Peace in the land of Israel must be negotiated by the Israelis and the Palestinians without intervention from outside superpowers. What must be the first move by the Palestinians and the Arab world is to recognize without reservation Israel's right to exist in peace and freedom. Making agreements with entities that deny your existence is a fool's errand. History has run out of time. If the nations of the world seek true peace in the Middle East, then they should look to Beirut, Cairo, Baghdad, Benghazi, Damascus, Ankara, and Tehran. That is where your metal will be tested, and not in the deserts of Arabia and Judea. For those who wish for a lasting and realistic peace, I bring you the blessings of all of our knights and dames of the Knights of Malta, Sovereign Hospitaller's Order of St. John of Jerusalem. As President of the Jewish Ministers Candace Association of America and Canada, which was founded in 1897, I led the mission Mitza Emuna, Operation Faith in 2006, in support of the settlers in Gush Katif, in Ganetal, in the Gaza. In return, Israel was bombarded by Kassams and by Kratushkas incessantly by Hamas. Land for peace? We don't think so. I was with Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir when I went to the Knesset to show our support to the beleaguered State of Israel during the first Intifada in 1988. I was in Jerusalem when my son, Yerushalmi, Jerusalem, was conceived. I was with my son at the Kotel, at the western wall of the Temple of Solomon, when he had his Bar Mitzvah. I was with Pope John Paul II when he invited us to the Vatican to embrace the concepts of Vatican II and the rapprochement between Catholics and Jews. You may ask, from whence do the Knights of Malta take their mandate to voice their position on these matters? The answer is found in the words of King David, in the words of Psalms, Psalm 121, verse 4, Hine lo yonum Shomer Yisrael. Behold, the guardian of Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Psalm 137, verse 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its cunning. If I remember thee not, if I set not Jerusalem above my chiefest joy. And finally, we go back to the Old Testament from the Torah, from the book of Shemot, Exodus, chapter 33. The Lord spoke to Moses, Go, ascend from here, you and the people you have brought up from the land of Egypt to the land that I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. El Eretz Sovat Chalav Udavash, to a land flowing with milk and honey. On behalf of the Knights and Dames of the Knights of Malta, Sovereign Hospitalis, Order of St. John of Jerusalem, let me conclude with this ancient Hebrew prayer. And to Jerusalem, your city, may you return in compassion, and may you rest within it as you have spoken. May you rebuild it soon, 
in our days as an eternal structure, and may you speedily establish the throne of David within it. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the builder of Jerusalem. Thank you, and good night.